Welcome back, everybody, to Grand Tactician The Civil War. This is episode three of our latest Confederate series. Episode two was a live stream, but it shows up in the playlist just the same. Episode four will also be a live stream sometime this weekend. Uh, so we're going to pick up right where things left off. It is September 1861. And uh, we continue the process of recruiting our new units. I'm hoping that by the end of this episode, most of our patron units will be recruited. The only ones that won't be will be ones for which we don't have the manpower, which is certainly possible in some states. Uh, I'm looking at the projects. I, I really want to get artillery reform, which is going to allow us to have those artillery battalions that have 16 guns in them instead of just the six that we have available right now. And we're super close to being able to make that happen. So um, I think very, very soon we'll be able to get those going. In the meantime, I am keeping an eye on the Union armies that have landed in North Carolina. I do have the Army of the Northwest headed down that way, but until they get their full complement of 17,000 men, I'm not really ready to fight yet. Army of the Susquehanna has got 18,000 men. Army of the Pennsylvania has got 9,000. He's got 27,000 between them. And on the highest difficulty, being outnumbered better than 2 to 1, just I just don't like those odds. So I do have a couple new units that are being recruited. I may also go ahead and uh, transfer the Hampton Division to them. In the meantime, though, I am thinking about sending Lee up to hit the Department of Pennsylvania again. I don't want him getting comfortable down here around Fredericksburg. Uh, so we've got a decent manpower advantage there. It looks like they're also in the process of taking Winchester. Uh, so let's send Johnston over with the Army of the Shenandoah to deal with that. But in the meantime, it looks like we're going to have a fight out west. So this is John Hunt Morgan, who I just placed in command of the Western Army. Uh, he's going to be pretty heavily outnumbered against Wadsworth. Interesting that James Wadsworth uh, has an army out there. That's pretty cool because he was traditionally in the east. Um, he commanded the division that uh, was in the first corps and included the Iron Brigade uh, at the Battle of Gettysburg. So, all right, we're going to be outnumbered here. Okay, the situation is that we are significantly outnumbered. There are two objectives that we currently hold, but one is worth more, and it's on this side of the river. Now, if we can get him to attack us right down the center, which I expect he will, because that's where the objectives are, then maybe it's worth it just to hold this objective and hold the river and defend against any crossing. I'm going to throw McClaws with the Finn Cowboys over here just to cover that other crossing. And there's certainly the possibility that he uh, comes at me over this crossing. So we're going to cover both of those. Uh, but we're going to keep the bulk of our force right in here. We'll see what happens. Well, unfortunately, when I was building up this force, I didn't have much in the way of weapons. So we've got either Springfield muskets or mixed muskets for all these guys. No rifles whatsoever in this entire army. So uh, that is a less than ideal situation. But nothing I can do about it. So his cav has shown up on the battlefield and he actually has decided to engage he's come right down to the river so Missouri Iron Brigade is just in range to be able to hit him with their Springfield muskets we've also got the El Paso heavy gunners with some 24 pounders here they're not quite able to hit him though just because of the angle So far, so good. But we can expect that's probably the screen for the rest of the army coming. His army's been arriving, and it's been quite something to watch because right about here is where they're visible to me for the first time. And I keep seeing more and more brigades coming down that road, and I keep thinking, man, how many more brigades do you have? And that gives you a little sense of what it must have felt like for... Uh, a Civil War soldier who is in a defensive position watching an enemy army arrive and you're wondering, okay, how many men do they have? And you keep thinking, okay, I hope there's no more. I hope there's no more. I hope there's not another brigade somewhere. Now, he is sending guys up this road, which tells me he's probably thinking about trying to come over here to where Reigns is. 
and I may try to cross over there. Now, if he does that, I'll do a couple of things. One, I may send Macintosh across right here just to try and maybe help out relieve some pressure. The other thing I'll do is I'll probably send reinforcements to that side. Here comes the attack. It's a little after 5 o'clock in the afternoon. He's coming at the crossing. I really wish I had rifles at this point because I'd be able to engage him at a little further distance. As it stands, we should be opening up on him here in a second. Not entirely sure why high pressure brigade. There they go. Looks like he's going to send everybody out this side. So I may go ahead and send Reigns across. going to take a while for him to receive those orders. Yeah, these 24 pounders don't have a line of sight. I'm going to back them up. Only three guns in this Arkansas State Artillery. We're looking good. Casualties look really good, which is ideal since we're outnumbered. May I go ahead and bring McClaws over, since I think we're pretty safe at this point from a flanking attack on that left side. Now let's just sit tight and hold the river crossing. Flemish lions are going to take the brunt of this attack at the bridge itself. It's really cool we got this little mill here that's actually animated. Okay, he just launched a melee attack with his cavalry. Did not see that coming. But we're ready for that. We've got reserves right there. So we'll back them up if it comes to it. How's the Flemish Lions doing? So far they're holding. They took a pretty significant amount of casualties at once there. Alright, I think we're going to hold. He's he's just kind of one after the other attacking over this bridge. Which is what you want to see, because in the past you'd see one or two brigades attack and the rest would sit back. At least if you're going to attack a crossing, it's good to see him throw everybody at it in rapid succession. That's what you want to see happen. So McClaws will be here to help back things up. Reigns is going to come in now and disrupt things a little bit by showing up on his side of the river, although we're getting pretty close to being out of daylight. Here come several more brigades attacking. Well, we can safely say that if we win this battle, the Flemish Lions are going to get the battle star for today. Holding against basically the entire army. He's lost 400 men so far, but he's still stable. Let's do rally real quick here. Now let's send Burnside across. All right, Flemish lines just broke, but they did their jobs. They threw off half that army. Now we're going to send the Yuma Territorial Guards in. Not entirely sure why my army commanders there enemy first cav was whipped they've disintegrated uh, human territorial guards broke but that's okay we have pretty well hurled back his army excellent I wonder how many casualties The, um, oh, he actually took the objective. Well, that's not a huge deal. We'll take it back. 
But I wonder how many casualties the Flemish Lions inflicted. Oh, Burnside's actually still active over here. We gotta be careful. We'll look at the final numbers as soon as this thing's over. Our first victory out west! Awesome, so uh, two to one casualties, so we like that. Let's go ahead now and look at the combat report. Look at that, Holmes's division inflicted almost all of the casualties. Uh, Flemish Lions and High Pressure Brigade actually inflicted about even numbers of casualties, as did the Missouri Iron Brigade, so uh, that whole division, really. The Flemish Lions were the ones that were holding the bridge, so I feel like it's got to go to them. Now, I will say this. Flemish Lions commander is not good. Uh, he's only got one star in each category, so we're going to upgrade our leadership here. We'll go to James Hawes, two stars on everything. I also want to look at their, oh boy, their division commander, not great either. Yeah, it's a little better. We'll go with Lewis Little for that division. We got Hood commanding the other division. It's a mixed bag with the brigade commanders right now, that's for sure. Oh wow. Ed Edward Johnson. Carter Stevenson. Now some of these guys their their stats are different depending on what level they're at. So now if we go back to you know someone like Edward Johnson well Nathan Bedford Forrest is good. Yeah, there's some good choices out there. I, I really need to kind of inspect my army all the way along and make some changes. We're going to give Forrest command of this division in the Army of the Northwest. Joe Wheeler's got some decent stats, though not outstanding. Oh boy, Braxton Bragg, not ideal. Edward Johnson, definitely a better choice for a division. There's me. My stats aren't great right now either, but we know that they'll go up with some experience. We've got the artillery reform ability now. Let's go ahead and choose that project. That is going to help a ton because that gives us now the ability to upgrade these artillery units uh, up to... 16 guns and I don't think there's a way to do that directly in the unit I mean other than combining some of these units to give them a few more guns see in this case that switched them they've got six pounder field guns I want to go to 24 pounder howitzers but now we can recruit additional battalions of full 16 guns now Army of Shenandoah only has four guns currently. We, we've got some more artillery on the way, but that's all we've got at the moment. And they're going to run into the 36th Army and an unknown unit arriving in five hours. Uh, they're going to be similar numbers to what we just faced in the last battle. Objectives all the way in the top northeast corner here. We are back on the Winchester battlefield, Battle of South Branch Bridge, and we have to attack. The bad thing is we don't have a lot of deployment space here. And we've got five hours until his reinforcement army arrives. Maybe from one of these other directions. So it's going to be interesting. Interestingly, I just spotted him up here. So I don't even know if he's at the objective point. He may have some men there as well. Let's go ahead and send Stonewall Jackson's division across. Even as the entire army is still moving into position along here. I'll, I'll put Hardy's division up here. Just to kind of screen. Actually, he's only got one, one brigade in his division at the moment. 
we're kind of built funny just because we're still waiting on units that have been recruited. So Hardy's only got one, but Loring's got four. Jackson has three. Jackson has taken the objective, so we're going to send him up this road now. We're going to send Loring's division over here. We're going to face this enemy. We know there's another, another army arriving at some point in the near future for him. Oh, they're showing up as 19 hours away now. I thought they were only showing us five hours away. That is a totally different story. So we'll go ahead and press the attack. Numbers are pretty even, and we have the objective. So I'm going to hold him in place. Oh, he's starting to move now. We'll have to wait and see what he does. Let's put Jackson up at this fence if we can. This is going to get interesting real fast. Oh boy, Porterfield's about to have his hands full. Big time. So we'll try to send as much help as we possibly can, as quickly as we can. We'll send early up over here. Jackson's getting into position. Porterfield's in the fight now. That's a 36 West Virginia, all by its lonesome, with pretty poor weapons, but that's the best we have available until our shipments arrive. We got artillery opening up on us now. All right, we need Jackson to move forward and start attacking. Move Cooper into position right here to Early's right. So far, so good. We are going to run out of daylight before too long. It is September, so I mean, we should have it at least till maybe 9 o'clock. Nice start for Porterfield. He lost 300 men, but did some damage there. Drove off Richardson. Second Virginia is about to surprise the enemy here. I think he sees us now. There's the Anson County Congregation, which already has received a battle star. I think that was Leonidas Polk's unit, but Polk got wounded. Clayton up here on this side. He is launching an attack on us now, which is great because we're ready for it. New York Copperheads are going to come into the fight right now. Kind of wish that we weren't about to run out of daylight. Casualties are actually pretty even. Once again, 36 West Virginia find themselves at the heart of it. drive off Lewis Blinker over here. Things are super close on this side. These guys are winded, so that's good. Got a little bit of an issue with two units overlapping each other. Copperheads over here since he's pulling back. Actually, he just broke. 
even better. Blanker just broke. Let's watch Steel, because he's looking a little shaky at the moment. I think we got this. Steel just broke, but that's okay. There's the Ringgold Brigade. Porterfield in the 36 West Virginia, right there at the center of it. 552 casualties with pretty poor weapons, but did their jobs and did them well, I think. I think that's going to be our unit we're going to recognize this time. Uh, let's look at the combat report for just a second, though. Yeah, they inflicted 449. They took a lot, but they kind of absorbed multiple attacks. So I don't think the numbers tell the whole story there. I'm going to charge these guns. Pendleton was wounded. The commander of the Rock Bridge Artillery, he was firing counter battery fire, that's why. Go grab these guns. Send in the West Virginia boys. Actually, we're going to charge, charge in here. Beautiful. That'll drive up the casualty numbers a little bit for him. Two to one. I like it. Nice. Good victory for the Army of the Shenandoah. Man, the Union is really coming at me right now. Uh, we, we keep triggering battles one right after the other. This is going to be the Army of Northern Virginia. Pretty even odds this time. Department of Pennsylvania and an unknown unit arriving in four hours. Robert E. Lee gets another chance at some glory. So we're on the battlefield at Fredericksburg. We are starting all the way in the corner. The Union holds all the objectives. There are four of them. So this is going to be an interesting one. We're going to go right up to Lee here. We're going to get everybody as close to this road as we can. Because that's basically how we're going to have to do this. Is Everybody's going to have to come down this main road. We'll come down this main road. And we'll have to try and figure out where we want to hit him. But we're probably not going to engage tonight. We're probably going to be looking at tomorrow, which means the enemy will have uh, his reinforcements in place by then. Because they're seven hours away. So we hit the end of the day. Didn't quite make it as far as I wanted to. We're right up near Lee's Hill, which historically on this battlefield was where Lee had his headquarters. This is a really big battlefield you really you can kind of had two distinct battles historically you had what happened on the confederate right where the union almost broke through and if they'd have committed any of their massive reserves they had on that side they would have broken the line and probably won the battle the attack on marie's heist which is what everybody remembers was actually the feint that was supposed to hold the confederate left while the union main attack happened on the confederate right it just didn't work out that way because the Union commander on that side was an idiot. So uh, we're going to advance slowly here because this is tough ground. We want to try and get up here and hopefully not run into him until we get up on top of the hill at Marie's Heights. And we don't know where the second army's coming in from, so we've got to be careful of that too. But we're going to move two divisions in right here, I think. I'll probably send... Smith's division up here just to cover our flank because he may come down at me from this side so I want to be cautious of that even though he may be all concentrated up in here. He does not appear to be occupying Marie's Heights so that's some good news. We can go ahead and advance forward now at least right there and maybe start moving down toward these objectives in the town itself. If we can grab those, we don't need to cross the river. We can kind of start to occupy. Okay, there he is. I was going to say we could occupy a traditional 
Confederate position at this battlefield, but not going to happen. I am sending Longstreet's division over this way. We're going to have to pull Garnet out as quickly as I possibly can. The good news is once we get Longstreet in a position, we can maybe start pushing down with these guys. I'm going to put Smith now covering my flank up here. And we're going to let everybody get in position before we start thinking about our attack. Pretty even numbers. Looks like the enemy's still bringing troops across the river over here, so it might make sense for me to go ahead and start moving in to position as quickly as I can. I do see some skirmishers over here in town, which means he does probably have units over there. going to just do our best to cover our flank over here, just in case. We've got some guns I'm getting into position. Hopefully they can open up. They're 12-pounder howitzers, so nothing too outstanding. Oh, no, 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 no. I didn't mean to do that. Keep them right where they are. I want to turn this guy. Looks like he's advancing as well. He's sending some cavalry forward. dismount the first Victorian mounted rifles and get them up here on the line. Alright, we've got Stockton sandwiched in now. He uh, advanced a little too far forward, I think. Get the fighting tigers right into this corner here on this fence line. Are your guns firing? They are. We should be able to do a number on Marston right here. I do need to grab these objectives if I can. Still nothing going over on this side. Once Napoleon gets his division in position, I may try to advance forward and take that objective, but right now the main thing is to drive these guys off. I have to pull these skirmishers back in here soon. Lee needs to be more in the center. Go ahead and swing the Armagh Irish around. We're going to take this slow, but we can't go too slow because he holds the objectives. So we have to be methodical about it. Let's go ahead and send out some skirmishers from Napoleon's division and then advance into the town there was a lot of street to street fighting happening at Fredericksburg when the Union first crossed in December of 1862 only they were coming from this way and this is where one of the pontoon boats was right there there were actually two of them right here side by side there were two there there were some pontoon boats down this way yeah you can see all of them there were three three different crossing sites. So it's pretty much just the skirmishers involved at the moment. I guess I can go ahead and advance Napoleon all the way because it does not appear the enemy's in town. Now 
And then we'll just kind of sit tight right here and maybe we'll try to swing these guys around. I'll, I'll hold one brigade here to cover the crossing and then we'll try to clear MacArthur out. I'm going to call Longstreet skirmishers back. I don't want to engage too heavily here because if for some reason Longstreet were to break, if my, my right collapses, I'd be in real trouble. I'm going to bring these guns out here, though. I'm going to speed time up a little bit, though. We got the objective, the first one. We're also occupying some of the houses. I'm kind of hoping that he'll come at me. Alright, we gotta rethink the, the guns here because he's actually coming across that pontoon bridge over here. So it appears he doesn't have anybody up here. Maybe that his units are actually on the other end of the field. I'm trying to hit my flank on the right. I do like that he's only advancing with one brigade right here. Alright, Yule, let's press press this attack. No, 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 no. It's not what I want to do. How are we doing, Bonham? So far, so good. Let's get Jonathan's rifles covering the flank over here. Oh, what is the deal with the... Uh, it won't let me line them up the way I want them to. I'm not sure what that's about. All of my formations are screwed up. Somehow. A lot of fire happening at the moment. Most of it's right in here. Everybody's holding so far. I'm a little worried about my right. We've got guys in these buildings firing on him, plus a detachment of skirmishers. I think I might actually go ahead and send the Georgia Zouaves across the river to grab that other objective. We'll keep him bottled up right here. Bonham. Just hang on, buddy. They've taken some casualties. I'm a little concerned about them. He moved these guns right up to my line, so we're going to charge those guns and drive them off. Like he's sending reinforcements over to shore up his right a little bit. I need to get these guns firing on somebody. Uh, fighting Tigers just broke. They only lost 245 men. Why did they break? Uh, they broke because they charged those guns. But they just recovered, so we're good. They drove off the guns, which is what matters. Canty is moving to take the objective. We just got to keep these guys bottled up here. Casualties are looking fantastic right now. For some reason, I, I don't know why he was bun he was 
dug in right around this one objective like that. He was just asking for this this kind of a situation. All right, we're gonna come over here and try to hit these guys. I gotta do something about these guns, so I'm gonna charge with Bonham. All right, we drove him back. Bonham's gonna probably break as he's lost about a third of his men. There he goes. And then he recovered, but then he broke again. We'll try to rally him. We've got these guns firing on ferry now. We're not gonna need to do too much more to win this, especially now that we hold these objectives. We can pretty well sit back and let him come to us. Call in our skirmishers. We're gonna swing Florida lead launchers around here. All right, fighting tigers need some help. Where did he go? Did he pull that unit back over here? No, he's still there. We'll let the guns just keep doing their thing. Let's push forward here. Get a little more fire on his main line. Alright, fighting tigers are stable at the moment. Emerald guards are getting in on the action now. Oh boy. Why did they just charge in there? I don't know why. D.R. Jones' brigade charged into the enemy, but they broke them, so I'm not going to complain, I guess. They're actually occupying those buildings. Alright, let's send two brigades to hit Stone, see if we can't break him and finish this battle off. Oh, he's got more back there, but that's okay. We broke Stone. Alright, we're going to move forward again. We've got three units in here. You know what? We've got the enemy this close to all-out retreat. Let's push it. Beautiful. I'm loving these casualties right now. The ratio. So he's falling back across the river. Let's send the Emerald Guard in. I'm going to send everybody. I want to break these guys. Charging into the streets of Fredericksburg. My fighting tigers broke again. That's okay, though. They did their job. Casualties are going to go up substantially on both sides. All right, this is probably not ideal for Frost. There you go. Push him back.
I love that we're uh, occupying these buildings for some cover. Alright, we'll get to the end of this thing and we'll start taking a look at the numbers. I really don't know who it is that's going to be getting battle stars for this one because it's been a jumbled mess. And no one unit stands out to me, so we'll crunch the numbers. But this is going to be a major victory at Fredericksburg. Look at those casualties. 23% for the enemy. 6,500 men. So, wow, it looks like it may be Florida lead launchers. They inflicted 1,200 casualties, including 1,000 on the infantry. Um, 21st King James Regiment of Foot inflicted 1,193. There's already two units in that division that have received battle honors. We may be looking at a third there. And then let's look at Buckner's division. Pretty even. How about casualties, though? Let's look at those. Boy, Armagh Irish took 33% casualties in that one. The 21st took 36% casualties. Florida lead launchers only took 7% and inflicted what they did. So uh, I think to me that seals it. We're going to give Florida lead launchers the, the battle honors for this one just for the sheer numbers and the one-sidedness of it. So again, it's really cool here. You can look right at the unit history. September 11th, 1861, fought in the Battle of Fredericksburg, suffering 108 casualties, inflicting 1,059. And you can see that for all of these different units. And some of these units, you can start to see now, have really taken a lot of attrition. You know, 21st King James Regiment of Foot, down to just 981 men. They've got 405 that are disabled. Uh, and you can see why that is. Uh, they took... 51 casualties at the Battle of James and Kanawha Canal. They suffered 498 at the Battle of Leesburg. They suffered another 557 at the Battle of Fredericksburg. So pretty substantial. Now this is really cool. Robert E. Lee is now showing as the General in Chief of the Army. So that promotion to Lieutenant General did make him the highest ranking officer in my Army. It just took a little time for that to get caught up with um, showing here on the campaign screen. John C. Fremont is the commanding general of the Union armies. Okay, we may have our work cut out for us on this one. This will be our final battle for this episode. A uh, lot, of, lot of action in September of 1861, uh, August and September. This time it's John Hunt Morgan's Western Army again, uh, up against the Army of the Mississippi and the Army of the Tennessee. Combined strength has me nearly two to one this time, so... It's going to be tough. Okay, the Battle of Rolla. Second Battle of Rolla, I think. Uh, he's probably coming in from right here, but he could go any direction he wants to get at the objective. He could come from down here. So I've got the Finn Cowboys under Lafayette McClaws covering that approach. So we have some advance warning if he does. Otherwise, I'm digging in right along here. That way, if he comes across here, we're ready. If he comes across there, we're ready. The objective's right here. We're lined up at this fence. We're probably going to hit nightfall before we see any action today. Okay, here he comes. And just as he arrived, we hit the end of the day. So we'll have to see where he's going to redeploy. He does appear to be coming that direction, though. I may go ahead and... Wow, really? I had more engineering points the day before. I wonder how I lost engineering points. I figured I would have accumulated a little bit more by this point. Well then. Okay, we're going to redeploy. Build in some uh, breastworks right here. Kind of expecting the entire attack to come from this side now. I'm going to go ahead and send Carter Stevenson out on the flank here just in case. We'll hold Preston in reserve. If he does come at me with everything here, then we'll cross over with the Tucson Rangers. So holding the line right here is going to be McCulloch's Brigade with mixed muskets and Flemish Lions with Springfield muskets. So still, this is my, again, this is my Western Army and they do not have great weapons. 
We're waiting for those weapon orders to come in so we can start getting some decent ones. Keep an eye out on things down here just in case. Here it comes. Pretty localized attack, so we can just kind of sit here and watch this one for a little bit. He's going to lead with the cavalry. An interesting choice. He's going to try to charge right into our works. Oh, the Flemish Lions broke. They broke too easily. Oh, man. Okay. So we're going to need Preston to hurry up and get into that position. Plug that gap. But we've got to hold the line against these other guys coming. We can't just turn and fire into the cavalry. I cannot believe they broke that easily. Ugh. Now we'll give them an instant order so that they start moving. Now he's coming at McCulloch's brigade. Now we're going to turn Shelby and drive him into the flank here. All right, his calves falling back now. Carter Stevenson is going to have to come up here and help out. Need Preston to get moving. Now we're going to get into some more melee here. Nicely done, boys. McCulloch's brigade did their job. No, 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 stop. Flemish Lions recovered. Let's get them back on the line. They're still unstable. But we're going to move help up in a hurry. Oh, what are you doing, Macintosh? All right, let's send Stevenson in there, too. If we're going to fight melee, at least let's have some help. I hope they don't both break, because that could be a quick end of this battle if that's the case. All right, Flemish Lions, help us out here. There you go. Let's try to rally McCulloch. And now there it goes. Uh, they broke too. Darn it. Little, what's your deal with your division, dude? Man. All right, let's try to get Preston over there. What do the casualties look like? Uh, pretty even. Comes another cavalry charge at the Flemish Lions who did not do well last time and this is a unit with a battle star ah I'm gonna take it away from you if you keep acting like that he is just bull rushing me and it's working he's completely collapsed the left of my line all right, let's get out of here. I do not think we are going to have any battle stars from this one. Okay. So we inflicted more casualties than we lost. We just had to get out of there before things got worse. All right, so that's a defeat at Rolla. Boy, we've had a number of battles. Let's just look at the history here, just from the last few days. September 9th, Cumberland captured by federal troops. September 9th, the first battle of Rolla. 
September 10th, Battle of South Branch Ridge, or Bridge. September 11th, the Battle of Fredericksburg. 12th, Winchester captured by federal troops. And then the 13th, the Battle of Rolla, which is a federal minor victory. Let's take a look real quick at projects. There's nothing currently available. It's going to be a little while. We might have something available with subsidizing industry or something here pretty soon. Numbers, pretty consistent to where they've been. I do have some things I'm queuing up. So we'll have a uh, another live stream episode coming sometime this weekend, Saturday or Sunday. I'll let you guys know when I know when that'll be. Until then, thanks for watching, and we will see you all again soon.